Welcome back to this video. Now, in the last video, we connected our Next frontend to our Storyblock backend. Storyblock is a content management system. In this video, I now want to ensure that we can actually edit our page right from within Storyblock, that we can click on our blog posts and even click inside of them to open up this editing interface and even save there and get a live update in there so that we can do all the content editing from inside Storyblock. This is a huge feature they offer and it's especially useful if you're working with other contributors who are not developers but who still should add content. So this is really great. Let's dive into all of that in this video. To get started with editing our blog, our page in a nicer way, we go back into our code. So this is the project as we left it. And let's now start with making a single blog post editable. Now for that, I'll first of all, console log response data in async data there, so that we can again have a peek at what we're actually getting back from the server. If I now open a single post, here's my console log. And if I expand this a bit, here's all the content we get back from story block. We got our content with our post content. And now there is something interesting. Do you notice this editable field here? This is not something we edit, but it's a crucial part when it comes to making this edible in this preview mode, Storyblock seems to offer to us. Now, how do we use that? Actually, it's super simple. Let's add a new directive to our entire post. It's a directive Storyblock Next gives us. So you remember, it's this module we installed. This automatically gives us a nice directive, which makes this easy. Now, if you're not using Next or you don't want to use that package, you can also go to the official Storyblock page, click on tutorials there. And actually, right now it's on the second page, search for that tutorial which uses Vue.js and there you'll find an alternative way which will work with just Vue.js. And actually, they got a lot of tutorials, a lot of documentation on all kinds of technology so that you learn how to do this with vanilla JavaScript, with Vue and so on. So here we use Next, so we can use a feature, this directive provided by Storyblock Next. So back in our post page, we can add the V editable directive to the div, which spans our entire post. And now between the quotation marks, we need to pass a reference to our content. Now here we're getting the response and we're extracting all the content properties. So here we could store this in a extra property maybe named block, the total name is totally up to you, where I just store response, data, story, content like this. Now we can assign this new block property to the editable. If we now go back to our page and reload our single block, blog post, we don't really see a difference. But now we can actually go back to story block here and go into a blog post. In this case, I'm in the second blog post. And now here, we can ignore these instructions, which would work with vanilla JavaScript. Here you, by the way, also find instructions for different languages, but we can ignore that. We already got everything set up. Here we can now enter localhost 3000 and click go. And now this will load our local page in there. Now, this won't work because the URL is incorrect. We access the second post just on localhost 3000, the second post. There is no slash blog in between. But thankfully, we can go to advanced here and enter a real path, which is just a second post. Hit save. Now you see it updated here. And now we see our post here. Now, that's nice, but we're not entirely there yet. Instead, we should now go back to our single post page and add the normal mounted hook. That's a hook, a lifecycle hook provided by Vue.js. Mounted because this has to run on the client. It must not run on the server. The created hook is actually also executed by Nuxt on the server. Therefore, we use mounted. And in there, we now access our view instance with this and then story block. Not story API because we're not making an API request, but story block 
is another object which is injected by that next story block uh, plugin or module. And here we just call init. Now this will initialize our project to be live edited, so to say. Now if we reload our story block page here, we can actually see some thin lines. If we click on compose, we see now that post is wrapped. If I click on post, we now actually see that here on the right, we can edit this. So I just clicked in there. Can even go to edit and click in there and it will automatically load this in compose mode. And if we had nested components there, we could even click these nested components in there and start editing them. Now that's nice already. Now we can add more. We can go to mount it again. And besides initializing this, we can now also call this dollar sign story block and then on change. This sets up a listener to whenever we change data on the backend. And here we then execute an arrow function where we simply say location using a default JavaScript API reload to reload the page and set true here to force the reload. With that, if we now reload that page here, it sometimes breaks due to right live reloading, you'll see something interesting. If I change the content, it's really super awesome and I hit save, you see it live updates here. It updates the content in here. And that is of course pretty huge because this now means that we can edit things here, save and immediately see a preview. And that of course makes working with our posts much more convenient because we see the result as it will look on our final page and well, we can, we even get live updating. So that's another very cool feature we can get here when using the story block um, SDK, in this case, the one already adjusted for next, but it works with any uh, SDK, no matter if you use the vanilla JavaScript solution and follow the steps outlined there, or if you use that solution here. Now this works for the post page, for the single post page, we probably also want to edit the about page and we do with exactly the same approach. We first of all also should get our block and I'm just naming it like this because it's named story block. It thinks in blocks of stories. So we get our block here. We just extract rest data story content and store this in the block property. Then we bind our entire section here. In case you're wondering, uh, wondering, by the way, why I'm binding the section and not h1, well, I'm binding the HTML element which wraps the entire content I'm in the end outputting. You can theoretically add vEditable to any HTML element, but only this element is then clickable to bring you into editing mode. So of course I want to wrap the entire page here. And I'm binding this to block two. And don't forget the second step, add mounted here and call this story block in it first of all and then this story block on change execute this arrow function where we simply call location reload and force this reload now with that we can save this too and now if we reload here we got a little error there is some missing closing parentheses curly brace so let's do that now if I click on about here, now notice I'm still in the compose mode of the post, of a second post. If I click on about, I'm still there. But now if I click into that page, need to reload once. Now if I click into that page here, now I'm actually in the editing mode of that about page. And here we can of course also edit this. All of us hit save and get the live update. This is pretty cool. This makes working with Storyblock really a lot of fun and, and really easy. Also for, for other people contributing to your page. Now important of course, this in this case is running on localhost. Theoretically, you could also host your development environment, your draft version, your staging version, so to say, on a real server, enter the real URL here, and then your collaborators from all over the world, world could see this. Right now, only people running the development server see this. So with this, we can edit this, a huge step forward. We take advantage of the um, editing capabilities. Now, if you don't want that visual mode, you can always go to the edit tab here for a given 
um, element and switch from visual to form only. And then you got more space for your forms because the visual preview is now disabled. This, of course, can also be what you want. Maybe you don't want to connect your front end to your back end like this. You don't want that preview. It's not an option for your environment. Whatever the reasons may be, you can go back to form only mode. But of course, you can take advantage of that visual mode too if you want. I hope this is helpful. Definitely play around with that. Our blog, of course, isn't finished though. We still need to do some cleanup work and ultimately, we of course want to also switch out our draft version for the published version and ship our published version to a real server. These are all things we'll do in the next and last part of this series.